Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everybody, this is Dr. Vishal Tivedi from Department of Biosciences and Bioengineering IIT Guwahati. And what we were discussing, we were discussing about the living organisms. So if you recall in the previous lecture, we discussed about the, uh, the classifications of the living organisms and in that context, we discussed about that how the, the organisms are being classified into the different kingdoms and what are the different properties of these kingdoms and so on. And subsequent to that, we have also discussed about the uh, different types of uh, ways in which the people are keeping the nomenclature of these organisms and so on. So to better understand the classifications of the living organisms, we took the example of the two different classes of or two different kingdoms, how we can be able to classify the kingdom. As you know that these living organisms actually are uh, are very much diversified. They are very, very much varying in terms of sizes, in terms of shapes, in terms of many other properties. So because of that, you have to adopt a, a certain criteria on which you can be able to classify the uh, any living organism which is present in that particular kingdom. To understand this aspect, we are taking the two kingdom as an example. So we are going to discuss about the animal kingdom and then we are also going to discuss about the plant kingdom. So let's discuss about the different criteria on which the animal kingdom is being classified. So we have the uh, set of uh, classification. Uh, so what you can see here is uh, the animal kingdom. So the criteria for making a classification of the animal kingdom. So we have uh, five criteria because the animal is, animals could vary from very tiny, you know, ant to a very giant elephant. So that's why the you can you cannot just have a simple criteria. You can have the different types of criteria on which you can be able to classify the different types of animals. So what you have, you have the level of organizations, you have the symmetry, then you have the type of the developmental uh, stages like uh, diploblastic or triploblastic organizations and then we have the segmentations and as well as the notochord. So let's understand each and every, all these criteria for classifications and then keeping these criteria in mind how the classification is being done. So let's first start with the level of organizations. So level of organizations, if you recall, we were discussing about the level of organizations. It could be of different types. So you can have the cellular level of organizations. So these are the organism where uh, only the cells are present. The classical examples are the sponges. These, uh, these organisms have the cells which are in loose aggregates. Uh, then we have the tissue level organizations. So what is tissue? Tissue is the collection of the specialized cells isolated from the other tissue by the membranous layer. So tissue level organizations examples are the cylindrates and the cells doing the same function from the tissue which means if you have a particular type of tissue, all the cells are coming together and that is how they are going to perform that particular functions. Then the tissues are actually going to come together to give you the organs. So organ level organizations, 
classical example is the platyhelminthes. The tissues are organized to give you an organ which is specialized for a particular function. Classical example is, for example, in humans we have the liver, right? So, liver is actually performing a function, but that has a different types of tissues which are coming together to give you an organ. And then we have the organ level of organizations. So, the classical example is analytes, arthropoda and all the higher animals. Where the organs has associated to form the functional system with, with specific physiological functions, organ system show variation from the annual to animal. For example, one of the classical system is circulatory system. Circulatory system could be of open circulatory system or it could be a closed circulatory system. We are going to discuss all these about when we are going to discuss about the specific class of uh, uh, animals or if I specific phylum. So, let us understand about the another criteria for the classifications. So, another criteria of the classification is the symmetry. So, what is symmetry? Symmetry is the symmetry means the similarity in shape, size and the number of parts on the opposite side of a medial line or the plane. For example, this is a ball, right? If you have a ball and it has uh, faces like this, you can easily be able to draw a line and on this line you can be able to have the two halves ready, right? Similarly, you can also have the alphabets, you can have an alphabet like A. So, if you want to make the symmetry, you can actually be able to draw the symmetry in this A if you cut it from the center, which means if you keep a mirror here actually, so you can understand, right? If you keep a mirror here, this portion, the image of this portion and image of this portion is actually going to superimpose to each other and that is called as the symmetry. Similarly, we have the symmetry in the butterfly, we have the symmetry in these particular type of shapes. Uh, for example, if you take an example of this object, for example, if you have an, uh, 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 like a uh, word like shape, what you see here is the this, right, S. So, in the S you do not have the symmetry, whereas H you can easily have a symmetry, you can have the two, two way symmetry, either you can have the longitudinal symmetry or the vertical symmetry because this portion, this portion is going to be identical. Similarly, A, we have taken an example of A. So, A is also can be divi divided into two halves. P, P does not have a symmetry because by any mean you cannot be able to divide that particular alphabets into two equal half. Similarly, E also has a symmetry because it has a horizontal symmetry from this portion, this portion and this portion is going to be identical to each other. So, this is called as symmetry. The symmetry is where you can have the similarity in shape, size and number of parts on the opposite side of a median line or the plane. The plane could be horizontal, the plane could be vertical or the plane could be radial. So, based on this, you can have the different types of symmetry. You can have an uh, organism which are, does not show any kind of symmetry. For example, you can have the organisms like, uh, so this is like you can see this is a symmetrical organism, right? You have this portion and this portion is symmetrical in nature, whereas this is the organism which does not have a symmetry because this portion is bigger and this portion is smaller. So, there will be no symmetry. So, there are organisms which do not have symmetry and you cannot divide the their body into two equal part. One of the classical example is sponges and the snail. Then we have the radial symmetry. The radial symmetry is that if you cut it into the radial form, for example, from the center, if you cut it into the radial form, you are actually going to generate the identical portions. So, they can be divided into two equal part through any plane. All the cuts passes through the center and appear like a radii. For example, the hydra, starfish and sea animals. Similarly, you can have the bilateral symmetry. Bilateral symmetry means you, if with the symmetry plane is actually going to divide the object into two different parts. So, uh, animal can be divided into two equal parts through one plane. A classical example is dog, the frog and the humans. So, they this portion and this portion is actually going to be divided. For humans also, we can easily get the you know bilateral symmetry from the center of our nose, right? So, if that plane you use, that is actually going to divide. 
so the third criteria is the developmental stages so you can have the two different types of uh, membranes for the in the different uh, developmental stages so the mass of cells during the developmental stages get aggregated either into the two membrane or to the three membrane stage as the germinal layer so you can have the organism which are diploblastic animals like the two layers so the, where you can have the outer ectoderm right outer ectoderm and the inner endoderm which are separated by the mesoglea one classical example is dendria so this is the uh, uh, diploblastic animals side right, where you can have the ectoderm and the uh, endoderm which are clear layers but they are separated by a uh, mesoglea similarly you can have the triploblastic animals so triploblastic animals are going to have the three layers as a germ layer where, where you can have the outer ectoderm and the inner endoderm and the middle mesoderm so this is going to be a clean and clear middle layer so you can have the three layers one this is called the ectoderm this the inner side it is called endoderm and the middle one is called as the mesoderm uh, the classical example is the platyhelminthes and the all the higher animals beyond that is actually been considered to be a triploblastic animals then we have the segmentations so you can have the some body, some animals are being classified uh, based on the segments so you can have the uh, segments like there are segments which are actually going to cut the uh, human the animals body so some animals the body is externally and internally divided into segment with a serial repetition of at least some organ for example in earthworm the body shows this pattern called the mes metameric segmentations and the phenomena is known as the metamerisms so that is what it is going to happen when you are going to have the different types of segments then we can have the notochord so the notochord is a rod like structure and it is made up of of the tightly packed vacuolated Uh, cells which runs along the mid dorsal line animal showing a vertebral column are called as the vertebrates right animal not showing a vertebral column are called as the invertebrates so animals are classified into the chordata and non chordata based on the presence or the absence of the notochord so this is the notochord where you have a rod like structure made up of of the tightly packed vacuolated cells and based on this uh, the organisms are going to be divided into two parts either they can be having the notochord or they will not going to have the notochord if they don't have the vertebral columns then they are if they don't have the vertebral column then they are called as the invertebrates if they have the vertebral column then it is called as the vertebrates then the last is uh, body cavities so animals can have the different types of body cavities and based on the body cavity also it can be also divided so body cavity is a space between the body wall and the alimentary canal the function of the body cavity is that it is going to provide the cushion to the organs right you can have for example in the in a human you can have the cranial capacity the cranial cranial cavity the cranial cavity is actually going to house the delicate organ like the brain similarly you can have the thoracic cavity thoracic cavity is like this just cavity right uh, where you can actually be able to house the uh, lungs right and then you can have the abdominal cavity where the you can have the different types of uh, alimentary canal and all other kinds of organs and then on the back side you can have the spinal cavity that spinal cavity is actually going to hold the spinal cord and uh, then you can also have the pelvic cavity the pelvic cavity is actually going to hold the uh, the urethra and all other kinds of delicate organs and then we have the abdominal pelvic cavity which is actually going to have the kidney and all other organs it allows the internal organs to grow and move independently from the outer body wall so based on the body cavity the organisms can be divided into different parts or different types uh the they can be acelomates acelomates are the animals which do not have any body cavity these spaces between body wall and the alimentary canal is filled with the parenchyma for example the platyhelminthes so in the platyhelminthes are acelomates because they don't have the space between the 
body wall and the elementary canal. So this is you see this is the digestive system, this is the elementary canal, and this is the body covering, right? But in between there is a no uh, space which is filled, right? This is a space which is filled, right? So there is no body cavity. Then we have the pseudocilomates. The pseudocilomates are the animals which show uh, false body cavity, which is lined by the patches of the mesodermal cells. The false cavity is called as the pseudosol, for example, the SK helminthes. So in a pseudocilomates, you have the outer body covering and then it is actually having a tissue filled region, which is called as the mesoderm and then it has a digestive tract. So it has a, a body cavity, but that is called as the uh, false body cavity or the pseudocilomates. And then we have the silomates and the silomates are the or animals which have the true body cavity present in the triploblastic animals. These, these mesoderm splits into two layers enclosing a body cavity called as the silome. The cavity is filled with the fluids known as the silomic fluid. In cockroach, the body cavity is filled with the blood and the cavity is known as the hemocele. So, silomates, if you cut a silomates, what you are going to see here is this is the body covering, right, which is the outer layer and then it is going to have the tissue filled region, which is called as the mesoderm and then it is going to have the digestive tract. This is the digestive tract and outside this digestive tract, what you are going to see is actually a silom, right, or body cavity. So, that is what is, so based on the body cavity, the animals are going to be classified according to the whether the body cavity is present or absent. Now, keeping all these criteria into the picture, the, all the organisms which are present in the kingdom Animalia are being divided into the different pairs. For example, on the based on the level of organizations, it could be a cellular level of organizations or to the tissue level of organizations. So, if it is a cellular level of organizations, then you are going to go ahead with the another criteria whether the system is symmetrical or asymmetrical. So, if it is a asymmetrical, then you are going to say about body cavity whether the body cavity is present or not. If the body cavity is not present, then it is called considered to be a silomate. And all these three criteria you have going to reach to the first phylum, which is called as the porifera. So let's discuss about the porifera. So porifera, the phylum porifera are actually the animals. The poriferas are the all aquatic, mostly marine, except one family which is called as the spongility which lives in the fresh water. So, all these animals are, all these animals are found in marine. They are sessile, which means they do not grow, they do not be moving to each other, moving from and they are sedentary and grow like a plant. So, they actually are attaching to us, uh, to a surface and then they are growing like a plant. The multicellular organisms, they are multicellular organisms with the cellular level of organizations. So, there is a no distinct tissue or the organs. They consist of the outer ectoderm and the inner endoderm with an intermediate layer of mesochyme. Therefore, it is a diploblastic animal. So, they do not have the triple layer. They do not have the third layer, which is the mesoderm. Instead of that, they have a meso mesenchyme. Then the contactile vacuoles are present in the some fresh water forms. The sponges processes a high de degree of regeneration, which means even if you take the sponges and if you crush them, they actually have the ability to reorganize themselves to produce the fully functional organisms. The organization of the sponges are grouped into three different types. It could be ascon type, it could be sicon type and it could be leuconoid type due to the simple and the complex form. There are several examples. You can have diclethera, you can have sicon, you can have granita, you can have eucalyptella and all these. And what you see here is a typical sponge. What you are going to be see that it is attached to a hill or the surface, right? and then it grows like this and from this side this is the actually the mouth through which the the food is actually entering into the body and then it is actually filtering the water and along with the water it actually takes up the whatever the food material is present in that water so these are the marine animals except that one family is spongility which is also found in the fresh water 
So this is uh, uh, based on the this criteria. So if you go with this criteria, it will end up into the phylum Porifera. But if you go with the tissue or the organ level of organizations, then you can have the uh, symmetry. Either it could be a radial symmetry or the bilateral symmetry. In the radial symmetry, you can have the acylomates and within this, you can have the two different phylum. You can have the cylentrata, which is called, where also called as nadaria, or you can have the cytanophora. So let's discuss about the cylentrata and then we are going to discuss about the cytanophora. Cylentrata, cylentratas are colonial or the solitary forms. So this means they are going to form in the bunches or they are going to be formed as individuals. They are sedentary or the free living animals, which means they are actually either be attached to a surface or they could be a free living animals. They are mostly marine but could be found in the fresh water like the hydra. Uh, body is readily uh, symmetrical, right? Tissue level, it's a tissue, it has a tissue level organization except that the cellular level organization present in the porifera. Then the body cavity is a uh, cylindron, helps in the digestion and circulations. Uh, it has two different types of bodies. It has a polyps and a medusa and polyps are the sedentary whereas the cylindrical for life forms. Medusas are the free swimming and the umbrella shaped shape. So you, the organism which are found in the cylindrata could be either polyps or could be medusa. Polyps are the sedentary and they are cylindrical like forms so they won't be moving each other whereas the medusas are the free living, uh, free swimming and the umbrella shapes. Uh, there are examples Physalia, Adamensia like the sea anemone or the sea pen or the hydra. Sea anemone is a polyp type whereas jellyfish is a medusa type. So this is just a simple example to show you that what is mean by the polyps and what is mean by the medusa type. Then we have the phylum cylentrata. So what you see here is a phylum cylentrata. What you see here is a hydra where you have this is a body stalk and it is attached to a set, uh, the surface, right? And this is the gastrovascular cavity. So mouth is surrounded by the tentacles which helps in the locomotion and capturing the uh, prey. So this is what you see here. This is the mouth, right? Where you have the tentacles, right? These tentacles are good enough to uh, catch the prey and this mouth is actually receiving the water from outside and then it goes into the gastrovascular cavity and where the prey what is present inside this water is going to be taken up by the animal. The presence of specialized cells such as syndrocytes which contain the stinging section as a nematocyte. These cells help the animal to catch the prey as the nematocyte discharge the toxin into them. They have a poorly developed nervous system forming the nerve nets and their reproduction is both sexual and asexual. Hydra reproduce asexually by producing the buds in the body wall which grows to miniature adult and break away when they are mature when a hydra is well fed. So this is what you see here. A hydra is actually reproducing by the budding where the buds are appearing from the main body and then these buds are getting pinched off and that's how they are actually going to be uh, grow as an adult individual. A new bud comes from the every two days. Sexual means involving the gametes. Then we have the Cytanophora. So Cytanophora is the exclusively they are marine animals. It has radial symmetry. This is radial symmetry, right? You can actually divide the animal into the, uh, as the radii comes. It is a diploblastic animal, so it ha does not have the mesoderm. These animals are classified as the sea walnut or the comb jellies. They are a spherical body with the external row of cilia. They exhibit the bioluminescence. So bioluminescence is a phenomenon where the organism is actually going to produce the light by the light pigments and uh, that process is called as the bioluminescence. These are the bisexual animals which means they are going to have the separate male and female uh, and they are actually be reproduced by the sexual reproduction and the sexual reproduction by the external fertilization which means they are going to produce the gametes outside into the water and that then it is going to be fertilized. Examples are Cytanoplana and the Cleobrachia. 
Then, so we have discussed about this. Now we come back to the tissue level organizations and the symmetry is bilateral. So when you have a bilateral symmetry, you have the many organisms like you have the acylomates, you have the pseudocylomates and then you have the coelomates. So within that you have the acylomates, so tissue level organizations, bilateral symmetry and acylomates, you have the phylum platyhelminthes. Phylum platyhelminthes or the worms actually. So it has the bilateral symmetry animal with a blind sac bloody plan. It is triploplastic and the acylomate which means it does not have the uh, coelom. It is mostly endoparasitic so you can see that it has a very well defined uh, suctions and because of that they can actually be able suckers right. They can be having a ability to suck the uh, food or the nutrition from the host. Body is ribbon like unsegmented dorsoventral fatten and uh, covered with the cuticle. Cuticle is a covering which actually uh, you know makes uh, protects the body from the damages. It is parasitic forms uh, shows the suckers or the hook for the attachment to the host. There is no digestive system in the parasitic membrane. So because why it is, does not have the parasitic uh, digestive system because it actually takes up the digested food. Excretory system is made up of, of the flame cells right and examples are the tinea solium, the tapworm what you see here right and the fasciola which is called as a liver fluid. So now let us uh, move to the next and which is the false coelom right, or the pseudo -silomate. The examples are SK helminthes or the worms. SK helminthes which are commonly known as the round worms. Round worms are mostly parasitic living in the body fluid of the host. Body is long and cylindrical, which is thread like. It is bilateral symmetrical animal. They are triploblastic animal with a perivascular cavity. Then it has a pseudo -silomate, which means it is actually having a false cavity. And uh, these animals shows the tubes within the tube type body plan. Okay, so you can see here this is the uh, this is the Scalmanthes, uh, right, and uh, it has a uh, the body wall shows the longitudinal muscle but no circular muscles. The excretion takes place by the protonephridia, and the uh, round worms lives an average of four months and have a life cycle ranging from as early as the 14 dose as long as 80 days, depending on the species. Examples are Ascaris, Gucheria, and uh, Dracuntus. So this is what you see here is Ascaris which has the separate uh, uh, male and female. Then we come to the third one which is the true silomates. Within the true silomates we have the Analida, Arthomeda, Olaska, Echinodermata, Hemichordata and Chordata and within the Chordata you have the all other all other species, uh, all other things, all other animals like uh, so phylum Analida. Phylum Analida, you have the these are the uh, earthworm and the leech, right? Uh, phylum Analida, they are mostly aquatic, marine or freshwater. Some are terrestrial, burrowing and the tuberculous, sedentary or the free living. Some are commensal and some are parasitic, which means a huge variety of organisms are present within the phylum Analida. They can be found onto the water, they can be found in fresh water, they can be found in marine, they could be terrestrial, they could be borrowing, which means they will make a dig into the soil and they will in, remain inside. They could be free living or they could be parasitic. The body is elongated triploplastic, bilateral, symmetrical, truly silomates and the wormy form which means they are worm like. The body is metamerically segmented right what you see here right these are segmented and externally by the transverse group and internally by the septa into a number of division. Each division is called a segment metamere or the somite. Body organization is of a organ grade body which means it also contains the organ right. So as per the body organizations contain it actually contains the organ but not the organ system. 
The epidermis is of a single layer of columnar epithelial cells covered by the thin cuticle not made up of, of the chitin. The body wall is contractile or dermomuscular consisting of the outer muscles and circular and inner longitudinal appendages are joined when present, right? So appendages are joined. Locomotory organs are segmented, segmentally repeated, chitinous uh, bristle like CT or the KT embedded in the skin. It may be borrowed by the uh, lateral fleshy appendages or the parapodia. The examples are Neceris, Earthworm and the Leech. Then we have the uh, second phylum which is called as the Arthropoda. So, Arthropoda are the largest and the most successful phylum. The Arthropoda is covering approximately 80% of the all the animals what have been found on the earth. Arthropodas are solitary and are colonials. They are mostly free living. They are omnipresent and bilaterally symmetrical. Body covered by a tough chitinous cuticle. So, they are actually having a, you know protections. Body is divided into the three parts, the head, thorax and abdomen. In some animals, the head and thorax are fused to form the cephalothorax. The arthropoda possesses the leg for the crawling, creeping, walking and the wings for the flying. There are examples. Examples are cockroach, butterfly, scorpions, centipede, glasshoppers and ants. This is what you see here, right? You have the insects, right? Different types of insects. You have the cockroach, right? And you have this is the eyes of the um, fly, right? The sexes are separate, showing the sexual dimorphism. So you have this is what you see here. These are two different types of sex, right? This is the female uh, sex organ, and this is the male sex organ. Uh, then animals are oviparous and fertilization is internal, right? Development is direct or the indirect, which means in some organisms the development is direct, whereas in some cases it is going through the stages of the metamorphosis. In some orthopods like the honeybee, individuals are produced by the parthenogenesis, which means without fertilizations. One of the classical example is that the queen honeybee is actually producing the all other honeybees, right? And sometimes the honeybees are being produced without the fertilizations. Some arthropodas are economically important like the honeybee, silkworm, lobster, prawn, crabs, etc. Some arthropodas are harmful and the vector for the several diseases like the mosquitoes, centipede, spiders, cockroach. You know that so many diseases are being spread by the mosquito like malaria, chikungunya, dengue and all sort of like. Similarly, we have the some of the diseases which are being also spread by the cockroaches. So this is all about the, um, uh, the discussion up to the arthropoda. Now let's move on to the discussion about the mollusca. So molluscas are the, uh, the um, freshwater or the marine animals. Phylum mollusca, they are essentially aquatic, mostly marine, Full few are freshwater and some are terrestrial forms. They may be found as the hidden parasite in the interior of the some animals. So they are actually either free living or they are also being parasitic in nature. They vary in size from the giant squids and claim to be little snail, a millimeter long, right? They have at least two characters, reticula and mantle not found elsewhere. The body is soft, unsegmented except in this particular category. Bilateral, symmetrical, silomate and triploblastic, they have the tissue level organization of the body organizations. The body consists of the head, food, mental and the vessel mass. The body is clothed with the one layered often called as the epidermis. The body is commonly protected by an exoskeleton calcareous shell of one or more pieces secreted by the mental, right? Examples are chiton, octopus, sepia, pila. Now, what you see here is the uh, head. Head is distinct, bearing the mouth, eye, tentacles, and other sense organs, except in Pletcopoda and Scaphoda. 
the ventral body is modified with a muscular plow like surfaces the food which is in variously modified for creeping burrowing and soaring what you see here is actually a unio and it is actually using this food so what you see here is this is a food which actually uses it for prowling so this is the plow like surfaces on which it actually slips right mental or the palladium is a fold of body wall that leaves between the itself and the main body and the mental cavity the visceral body mass contains the uh, vital organs of the body in the compact form taking the form of dorsal humps or the dome the body cavity is hemocele the coelom is reduced and represented mainly by the pericardial cavity gonadial cavity and the nephridia the digestive tract is simple and the anterior mouth and it is a posterior uh, anus but in gastropods scaphoids and the centiphores the intestine becomes a u shape bringing anus to the anterior portions the sexes are usually separate so it is a diocious animal which is means it has a separate male and uh, female uh, uh, organisms but some are monoecious which means they are going to be hermaphrodite fertilization is external or the internal development is direct or with the metamorphosis to the trachophore stage called as the uh, veligera larva so this is what it is showing is here right it, it could be um, say so for example the male and the female so male is producing the sperm and the female is sperm producing the ovum and then they are going through a process of fertilization and that is forming the larva and then this larva is eventually going through the developmental stages and then it is going to produce the juvenile uh, animals and that the juvenile animal is eventually going to develop into the adults then we have to talk about the echinodermata echinodermata or the starfish which where the starfish is present uh, so the phylum echinodermata phylum echinodermata these are the spiny skinned animals they are exclusively marine solitary sedentary or free living conolian and the benthoic they are radial symmetry with the pentamerous symmetry so they are having a radial symmetry right this is what we have discussed right so if you draw a line from the center it you can be able to divide the animal into the uh, equally divided parts the bodies are sparicles elongated and star shaped so these are the simple several examples then body does not have a well defined head and the spiny it has a spiny exoskeleton present made up of of the calcareous plate and the presence of a water vascular system so what you see here is a, actually a water vascular system in the body for locomotion this system the water vascular system is composed of a canal connecting the numerous tube feet so what you see here is actually the numerous tubes what is being connected to each other and the echinoderm is moved by the alternatively contracting muscles that force water into the tube feet causing them to extend and push against the ground so what happen is uh, it has the contracting muscles and because of that in these uh, tubes it actually fills the water and then it actually utilizes that to bring the uh, push uh, forces and that's how the echinoderm actually moves into a particular directions so that is then it is relaxing and allowing the food to retract so it actually you know uh, fill the water and then remove the water and that's how it actually uh, moves from the one place to another place the water enter the water vascular system through an opening called as the madrifophyte the examples of these class this phylum is starfish sea urchin bitter star and the sea cucumber now echinodermatous are carnivorous which means they are actually feeding on to the other animals and the mainly feed on the molluscas so they actually are feeding on to the other type of molluscas they move with their arms and the tube feet the respiration is by the peristomial gills circulatory system is largely reduced it is the open type and the heart is absent uh, we are going to discuss about the open and closed type 
Nervous system is simple with the ring around the uh, mouth and the radial nerve in the arms. Sexes are separate and the fertilization is external and development is indirect. They show a high level of regeneration. So, the sexes are separate which means the male and female are going to produce their gametes and then it is the going to have the fertilization which is going to be outside and then after that it is actually going to go through with the uh, different developmental stages and ultimately it is actually going to form the uh, adults. So this is all about the different organism what is being present in the echinodermata. Now following this we have the two class which is called as the hemichordata and the chordata. Hemichordata are considered to be uh, underdeveloped chordata or they do not have the well defined uh, caudal vertebra. So, hemichordata, these are the exclusive marine animals usually living at the bottom of the sea. They are mostly free living, some may be sedentary. Body is soft, fragile, vermiform and unsegmented. Body is divided into three parts, proboscis, collar and the trunk. Buccal cavity gives rise to a rod like structure which is considered as the notochord by the some scientists. They feed on the microorganisms which are present in the water and they are spiny skinned animals. The examples are Beranoglocus and the Sacoglossus. So this is what you see here is a hemichordata. It does not contain a well defined vertebra and that is why they are also being considered as under the category of invertebrates. Proboscis helps to make the borrow while the entire body brings about the movement. Elementary canal is complete, it is straight or the U shape, uh, respiratory occurs by the gills and the gills are open as the gill slit, circulatory system is simple and the closed type, the blood is colorless, the nervous system is embedded in the epidermis on the both dorsal and ventral side, the sexes are separate, fertilization is external and the development is indirect through the free swimming larva. This phylum is the connecting link between the non-chordata and the chordata. So the organism what is being found in the phylum hemichordata are having a characteristic of both the invertebrate as well as the vertebrates and that is why they are considered to be a connecting link between the non-chordata and the chordata. So with this uh, we have discussed uh, mostly about the invertebrate animal and as well as the uh, non chordata So, we have discussed about the invertebrate animal and we have also discussed about the non chordata What we have discussed, we have discussed about the different types of criteria to classify the animal kingdom and then we have taken the e examples of the uh, animals belonging to the different phylum based on the how they are being classified using the different criteria. And uh, with this, I would like to conclude my lecture here. In a subsequent lecture, we are going to discuss more detail about the chordatas, where we can going to have the, we are going to study about the higher animals like the birds, reptiles, mammals, and so on. So with this, I would like to conclude my lecture here. Thank you.